uh, play of the game from way down to two. Silence. The Rainer getting absolutely a team wipe. The living bombs going. Oh my goodness, the ring. Bob says they go gonna find Rainer. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Nexus Gaming Series. It's, uh, it's, it's Monday, and it's a busy Monday, and tonight we're going to bring you a B-West Division matchup. Tonight I am joined by Lulu. Good Hello, evening. Arrow. So, we already have our teams ready to go. Let's hop right over to the maps, show you those, and then we'll get right over to the draft here. So, real quick here, Faint Compton's banning out Battlefield of Eternity and Volsky Foundry. Phoenix Rising Onyx banning out the Towers of Doom and Dragonshire. And our first map is going to be Tomb of the Spider Queen. Hmm. Illidan would be most proud because uh, I am not prepared. I can't find my pen. What do you think of them apples? Uh, I, my team doesn't like it when I try and do the Illidan voice. Oh, well, these guys Very have had quick blaze yeah. Ariel there. <laughs> these guys have had a few minutes to figure out what they want to play, so it's not overly surprising to see uh, that they're they're okay. ready to go. How about that first pick, Malthiel, or not Malthiel, Malthiel. Malthirian, though? That is a surprising first pick. That's bold, isn't it? I I do wonder about that. Like, what else? Okay. So, are they going to ban Tassadar? Is Tassadar a pick here for this? I know I have a pen. <laughs> there we go. Ah, I'm proud of you. Just, what... I, don't, I mean, we'll find out soon what the master plan is here. There's the Tassadar ban. Yeah, I mean, I figured that that had to be the case. I mean... Yeah. Unless that wasn't the real plan, because that was such an obvious setup to bait the Tassadar ban. I mean, maybe, but even still, if they left it up, Galaxy it provides so much value. But they don't have a lot of wave clear at this point, so they do need to have something else into that. Varian going to be the here and I like that get rid of your potential taunt <laughs> continuing yeah, the on with the so much more prepared than the Nexus cats ever are <laughs> <laughs> well again I mean these teams were uh, scheduled to play at 10 we got the game officially started about 10 15 because they uh, they were kind enough to wait for me so I'm a little surprised like all they're putting all the wave clear oh my goodness guys I, don't, I haven't had time to write everything down <laughs> please uh okay that's it yes, no, go, go, go. rainbow lance is not playing gaslow playing orpheus all right i got them all as long as they don't switch i'll have to check that so yeah uh interesting setup so the tracer could still potentially get taunted by the garage um could get the rewind from chromie and i think I think, if I remember correctly, we tested this the other day, or not tested it, but we found this out the other day. If you hit Tracer's Rewind before Temporal Loop completes, you get sent to where the Temporal Loop goes. So you have to be, like, you have to time that Rewind perfectly to make sure that you don't get zipped over. Oh, that was Rewind? Oh, uh, okay. So yeah. Were you in that game? I was. I thought it was the blink, but I didn't realize it was the other thing. Yeah. Okay, looks like everybody's set, so... <coughs> excuse me. Game number one between Faint Competence here and Phoenix Rising Onyx. Phoenix Rising Onyx. Phoenix Rising Onyx. Phoenix 
Phoenix Rising Onyx has the portrait synergy, they for therefore they win this game. Oh, well, there you go. Why don't you go ahead and get us started with uh, Onyx on the right here? <laughs> okay. They have uh, Crinovast on the Blaze, Karama on Lunara, Sailor Twift on Ariel, Sir Noble on Garrosh, and Gokwe on Chromie? Goku! Goku. Oh, no. But there's an E. Whatever. Yeah. Oh, okay. Goku. And over here for feigned competence, we've got uh, Beaver Hunter, I believe, on the Tracer, Hyperbole there on Malganus, Jonah Fencer on the Malfurion, Rainbow Lance on the Orphea, and Chef Steve gonna serve us up a little bit of some uh, some nice food tonight on the Leoric. I don't know that I would want any of that food, though. It probably won't kill you. I don't know. Undead people making food. <laughs> I don't know. You don't want you don't want uh, like people get throwing their nasty fingers on food. But hyperbole gonna get uh, a nice route to help keep him alive at least for a moment. But Oriel ultimately gonna get that detainment strike kill. First blood going over to Phoenix Rising Onyx. What a big first throw of the game. Yeah, way to throw the game so early there, uh, That's not Sir Noble. What I meant. Oh, oh. Garrosh threw him into the team. I'm not a mean person. Yeah, see, she says that, but in reality, we all know. We know what you meant. We get it, Lulu. Chromie getting her level four talent already. I'm from Div D. It's the wholesome Div. So we've got Orphea going into her, uh, is it on point at level one? It is. So Shadow Waltz getting that extra uh, damage at just at the tip. Nice detainment strike here onto the Tracer though. Sailor Drift yeah. really showing off here. Would you say that your knowledge of talents is on point? I would actually, <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool, just checking. Yeah. And, and you know, I gotta say, like, with these detainment strikes, Sailor Trift is, is kind of like, it's almost like she's shaking it off. Oh my gosh. That one took it you took a minute, me a didn't second. it? It did, it did. Yeah. Looking for another one. I think she's looking for the Malganus, but oh. uh, almost had the Tracer on that one. Malganus getting a big sleep, at, although it's not gonna matter. This time, Garrosh getting that kill. Krino happy to be back on Blaze, says 7th 8th. Right? Krino <laughs> always on Blaze. Like, does has he played a hero other than Blaze this season? I don't know. He, after the last match, he literally begged people to ban Blaze. So he didn't have to play it anymore. No one's fallen for it yet, though. Well, Beaver Hunter has managed to stay away from the, uh, the death zone there, even with the Garrosh and, and Oriole throw detainment strike combo. Garrosh still trying to get those gems turned in. Has 14 of them, hasn't been able to. And with repeated offense there, Ariel's just gonna get even more deadly with these detainment strikes. Already landing them like a homing missile. Oh, missing that one just barely. So clearly caster's curse. Shame on you. Right? And there's that on point. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, I, I thought for a second there that was an into the fray before I realized, yeah, they're on opposite teams. Uh, <laughs> but it almost looked like maybe Tracer could have snuck out a kill onto Oriel, but Tracer was like, I don't have any health, and I'm under a, a keep or a fort in two towers. This seems like a bad place. A really clutch escape on her part, though. So, let's see. What do we have out on my friend? Is this the... It is Strangling Vine, so the reduced healing effectiveness here. Garrosh gonna get the throw onto Tracer. She blinks away as Malganus coming in has the fell claws here. And level seven's coming up here soon for Phoenix Rising Onyx. We didn't get a chance to highlight where these teams are in the standings just at the at this point. Um, but Phoenix Rising Onyx is a little bit a little bit higher overall here. They've got 12 points. They're currently sitting at number two in the standings for Division B West as Chromie's turning in uh, her, her gems up here. So very close are Phoenix Rising Onyx. Whereas uh, Feigned Competence currently sitting at uh, five points. So looking to increase their point total here, catch themselves up, get them 
into the middle. They could make it all the way up to sixth place if they can get a domination victory here tonight. Ace corrected me in the chat. Apparently Lurk Patrol did ban out the blaze, so Krinovast got to play literally any other hero. Nice. I'm sure he thanks you, Ace. Probably. Malfurion, though, getting... <laughs> okay. I was going to say, he's just going to get surrounded here and, and killed at the thing. Oh. Oh. But it didn't matter. Beaver Hunter there recognizing... Oh, yeah. Recognizing the timing of that temporal loop, but ultimately it didn't matter. So the uh, bot and mid web weavers both going down pretty well here. Top webers oh. still... Wow, okay. I think that was a combination of uh, Lunara and the wave from the web weaver there. Did you see if that if that happened? Did the wave hit? Uh, I'm not sure. I just saw okay. her get tossed and then deleted. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I, I was elsewhere for a moment, so I didn't quite catch that. Yeah, Ace pointing out 447 to repeat a defense. I mean, that's that's pretty solid. Like, again, Sailor Twift has been hitting these, like, like magnets. Just crazy. I wish I was that good on Ariel. <laughs> Hey, it's okay. You know, I think the game we played, you got your quest done before level 20. I did. It was level 19. Thank you very yeah. much. All right. Oh, and on to the boss. It's a little aggressive, but... Faint confidence doesn't have tins, though. Yeah. So there's not much they can do except for get turn in. If they try to turn in, they have enough. No. They have enough. No? Most of them are on Leoric here. They need to get uh, Orphea to turn in as well, though. And I think uh, they they kind of need to just get it done. Like, they'll get tens from what? turning in, but... I'm puzzled. Okay. They don't have enough. Hyperbole doesn't have enough. It had to be Orphea. And now they've got a boss going in the top lane. This is, uh, this is no bueno, guys. Especially yeah, since... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Phoenix Rising get gets the turn. Oh. This just went from moderately bad to oh, oh cool. not not good at all. But we do have level tens coming up here, and there is the potential for that eternal feast uh, inside of a entomb. But the rewind coming right into to Garrosh getting tracer killed. That was pretty unfortunate. Yeah. And with the web weaver coming in in this top lane now, this I mean this top keep is definitely dead. And even with well, big taunt there, hyperbole getting just leaping strike to death. And Sir Noble is pretty low here. But it's not gonna matter, he just throws Leoric away. Rainbow Lance now trying to get away, gets caught by the flame stream. The web weaver's pretty low, but these guys have just kind of run away with these team fights, so. So They're going to move right on to the core. Yeah. Death timers are low, but the damage on the core is, is going pretty quickly here. They get the, the kill on to Lunara, but it doesn't matter. Her dots are already there. Uh, eight minutes and 14 seconds. So much like Phoenix Rising's draft, that game, very decisive. Yeah. Oh man, I didn't even get a chance to write down the bands from last game or from the game because I was behind. Oh well. Arrow, what are you doing, man? Yeah, right. I am pretty sure there was a Johanna ban and a Deathwing. I know there was a Deathwing ban. Yes. So that was, was um, that was you know. Phoenix Rising coming out with a very strong early game team. Um, you know, Feigned Competence really needed to get get their game going on a little bit earlier, and they couldn't really get the kill pressure until they had... Uh, oh, wow, these guys are already ready to go. Let me show the talents here just for a quick second. Um, they, they couldn't really get to, you know, the kill pressure they needed until level 10, and they, I mean, they just got level 10 right at the very end of that.
get you an invite to this game here. So, all right. That was game number one. <laughs> it was. It was, you know, I think it was really the power of the uh, portrait synergy that helped Phoenix Rising in that game. Could have been. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. This is, looks like it's going to be another map pick by Phoenix Rising. Going to the Infernal Shrines. And I think this is the, uh... I think this is the most picked map in NGS once again. Why though? Oh, is Lurk Patrol playing as well? Ace, what are you doing here, buddy? Maybe he's gone now. He better be yeah. gone now. Maybe pick a little wave clear. Yeah, that was, I mentioned that in the draft. Like their only wave clear was Leoric and that put him in kind of an awkward spot. They wanted to fight and they didn't have really the Strong health bars and all that stuff that they needed. But, uh, yeah, I guess there are two other games going on at this time. They're both being cast as well. One by Bahamut, the other one by Murda. Ah, so you can't do the, um, mythical double cast we've all been waiting for? I mean, I there's no chance I'll ever be able to do that. I, I don't... Not with that attitude. Yeah. <laughs> do what now? I see you guys, you're playing a game right now. Yeah, good luck with that. Pro is ready, they say. Well, I mean, we're ready, I'm ready. Are you ready? Uh, I'm ready, yeah, I'm here. I'm gonna show the standings ready? I mentioned earlier. Me. So, Phoenix Rising Onyx, if they can win this match with a 2-0, they'll be tied with You Are Not Alone. All right, here we go into our draft. I'm gonna go get a dog, BRB. You can talk about the draft while I get that. You're going to go get a dog. You already have three. Now we're just waiting for a bait. I'm back. Oh, you missed a lot. I did miss a lot. Look at all this that we missed. Alpha, what is going on here? Here. I'm oh, do you have an here. alpha on cam? I'm trying to get her. There you go. How about that? Huh? Do you want to do shoulder? That's almost almost on cam. All right. Hanzo going to be the first ban coming out from uh, feigned competence, making sure they were on the right side there. Instant. <laughs> Instant ban. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they clearly have an idea of what they want to deal with. There you go, Alpha. Let's get you a little higher. I'll sit higher so that you're sitting up higher too. So Johanna, the next ban. Johanna gets a lot of value here, especially like she can go into that reduced cooldown on her um, condemn, which can provide a lot of value. And there goes the Garrosh. I like that. I mean, Garrosh did a lot of work for teams, so it doesn't su surprise me to see him gone. ETC going to be banned. Do we see the Deathwing? Drum roll time. Uh, Yawners, I didn't look to see how many games, yeah, how many matches they've played, so it's entirely possible, yeah, they may be, you know, one game extra. I'm actually surprised to see them... Let the Oriole through. Like, Oriole was super strong for them. She's a strong hero. Like, even if they overcome, you know, the uh, the rest of the team, like, Oriole just did so much work in that. And I feel like she gets even more value here because while you're fighting over these points, you know, that if you, if you take Searing Light at one, I don't think she did, she took Swift Sweep. Um, but if you take that, you get a full health bar or hope bar immediately back and this looks very yeah. familiar it, it does uh you know maybe faint confidence knows something with the hanzo ban that they're just really scared of and they'd rather deal with ariel even though she's real strong right now 
Possibly. Savannah's getting banned out. Deathwing is still on the table, and ultimately, at least so far, uh, I guess, like, Leora kind of, you know, can be a, a decent counter to him, so, um, you know, that's, that is one thing on the table, but I don't feel like really... Well, and Blaze reduces damage, so I mean, he's not going to be super oppressive for either side, but still could be an option. I couldn't have asked this on Blaze again, huh? No, I'm pretty sure they're they're going to swap uh, Karino off of Blaze. Mm, yeah. That's, that's a bait. He and uh, Sailor Twift are going to switch yeah, it up. Yeah, exactly. Red, the, uh, the dogs love their buffalo ears. That's, that's new things happening in this draft. That is new. What do you think about that? They, uh, they're heroes. Phoenix probably has pretty good uh, clear for the point. Alright. Well, definitely the wave clear with Jaina. Also, the slows here to help a purification salvo. Yeah. What are you... That's that's a really good comp that the Phoenix Rising has. And they got Phoenix on Phoenix Rising. Hey. Hey. All right. So now they're going to be super powered. Alpha had to go because she was getting into stuff she was not supposed to be into. <laughs> so we're going to see a, a different player playing the Leoric. This time it's going to be Beaver Hunter. Ah, uh, yes. Malfurion. Tracer last game. Yep. Uh, Maya and Chef Steve switching over to the Diablo. Perfect timing. Man. I think Confidence has a lot of great names on their team. <laughs> they do. All right, well, go ahead and get us started with uh, Pro over here, would you? Okay, for uh, Phoenix Rising Onyx, they've got Goku on the Jaina, Sir Noble on Anubarak, Sailor Twift on the Ariel, Kurama on Phoenix, and Krinovas on Blaze. Shockingly. Right? Who knew? And over here for feigned competence, we've got Beaver Hunter playing the Leoric, Chef Steve on the Diablo, Rainbow Lance on Maiev, Hyperbole on the Kel'Thuzad, and Jonah Fencer on Malfurion. Jet Propulsion right into the Leoric. But a, oh my goodness, a big root there on the, oh, I guess that was Malfurion. I, was, I thought it was Kel'Thuzad and I was all excited. I thought Kel'Thuzad just got like five stacks immediately, but not quite. It's almost a 12 second kill. <laughs> it was very close, yeah. <laughs> and that's, I mean, that's the power of what uh, Phoenix Rising has. They've got that engage between really either one of Blaze or Anubarak, and then you're just stunned for pretty much the rest of time. And at level 10, if they take Ring of Frost, then it's going to be even worse. So there's a lot of CC potential here out of Phoenix Rising, so. Oh, that was a big route there onto the Phoenix interruption on the uh, warp as well, so. Not quite able to get the kill though. So, so far tonight, 100% of the teams that got first blood won the game. So, Feigned Competence is looking for that first blood here tonight in this game number two. I forgot to do the poll. Lulu, did I lose you? Uh, no. Um... Okay. So, we're sitting at seven stacks so far for the Kel'Thuzad. 26 here for Diablo working on those souls. And he did take the Feast on Fear. So, every time he flips somebody or stuns them into a wall, he's going to get a percentage of his health back. We also do have that uh, Swift Sweep here for the Oriole, as mentioned last game. And there's that Detainment Strike right into that wall. Went uh, the Diablo, so... 
And this is a uh, mobile offense as well for the Phoenix, so... Don't see a whole lot of that. Diablo looking for the Oriole, but again, the Impale coming out from a new brack is going to slow things there. And Maya having to dodge her way out of the stun. We do have Leoric doing his uh, double soaking duty here. Soaking top against the blaze and then rotating down to gather against Jaina. So that keeps him pretty close here. A little bit of a scary moment for Phoenix. Oh, they might get it. Rack. And there it is. Feigned competence coming in almost at three minutes gets the first blood of the game on the Anubarak. And that is the kind of momentum that they need to get started in this game. They've got the uh, shrine active now. It's a frozen Punisher. And they need this. They need that win to build the momentum and keep moving things forward for them in this game. Yeah, and it lets them get uh, a start on this shrine here, which is good because Phoenix Rising has a lot of clear for this. Yeah, and Fane Competence isn't super great. Diablo going deep in, though, is yeah. this is probably not good for him. Can't get past the Glacial Spike. Feels bad. Ooh. Yeah, unfortunately, Diablo getting body blocked in by the uh, Glacial Spike. Did they get but the Phoenix, though? So very oh, close. So close. Mayav, however, may trade out her life for that. Yeah, Leoric's still just soaking in lane. Yeah, Leoric did, was coming down there after yeah, the Diablo guess... died, but at this point, there's really no no reason to come down. This is pretty much a uh, Phoenix Rising Punisher. Hey, Arrow. Hey, so uh, if, Lulu. Uh, if Phoenix died and got resurrected by Ariel, would you say Phoenix Rising? No, it would really, really be more Phoenix Risen. I suppose for three seconds he could be rising. It's true. All right. Trying to pull the Jaina, but the wall was still up, so she got stuck by that wall. A new rack dove up through, though. Uh, but really, he's just soaking up all the damage from the team, and they're not putting on to the Punisher. And the Punisher's freezing the fort. Diablo getting knocked into the wall is once again in the middle of a whole bunch of red. The root is going to land here, so that's going to give Kel'Thuzad more stacks. He's up to 27. So getting pretty close. The jet propulsion missing by the smallest amount. Man, Anubarak was such a good distraction there. Just being annoying. And all the buildings were frozen, so they weren't really putting that much damage on him. And the Punisher just did its thing. Yeah, and Anubarak's got beetles, so he can kind of do that. And and really the only way that uh, Feigned Competence could have really done anything about it would have been if they were able to get a charge, a root, and actually like get all of that damage right onto his face almost immediately. But they were kind of spread out because of the Punisher, made it very difficult for them to accomplish that. Does Phoenix come back with full shields or just health? Yeah, he should be full of everything, Derry, which Monk has already answered, so there you go. That would be most unfortunate for Phoenix if he did come back with just his health and had to regenerate his shield. It just gets one shot immediately because he has no shields. Well, catching the Oriole here, getting the root... And Kel'Thuzad oh. is full here. They don't get the tether completion, but they do get the kill onto Ariel. And that is, uh, once again, that's a fantastic play here for Feigned Competence. Now they're going into the Frost Blast. There it goes against the Jaina here. Jaina does not have Ice Block, not even close. And uh, the Silence coming out, they're going to be able to get that kill onto Jaina. So two kills here in favor of Feigned Competence. Yeah, they were able to capitalize on that little bit of time where they had tins and uh, Phoenix Rising didn't yet get that second kill. Now Leoric has a rotation coming his way, but he's able to use that Wraith Walk, get out of dodge. He said no thank you. Isn't bad because I hate Phoenix, says Terry. <laughs> Fair enough. 
All right, well, with the team being split up here, we're gonna get a little bit of damage down here in the bot lane, get the wall down. Uh, the Glacial Spike used, trying to catch that Jaina, but Malfurion, I think Malfurion's toast. Uh, maybe not. The, the Frost Blast gonna root the Anubarak, the Burrow Char- or, I'm sorry, the f Shadow Charge. So many different charges. And I think with just slightly better positioning, they could have gotten that uh, Anubarak into the root. Oh. Big combustion potential here. And there goes, now Malfurion's toast. I don't think there's anything that keeps him alive here. He was at three health, he's still alive somehow. Okay. Big group from Kel'Thuzad. Chef Steve now caught in the oil and this time it's gonna be two for nothing in favor of Phoenix Rising. Yeah, and right before the objective comes up too. It's a little unfortunate. But Diablo's back already. Wait, did he die? Yes. <laughs> Derry says, waiting for this game to get to 20 so we can see Cage and level 20 Frost Blast combo. I don't remember what the level 20 Frost Blast does. Let's take a look. Uh, two, and then Talents. Level 20. Frost Blast slows, takedowns, release blasts. Oh my goodness. That would be nuts. I don't think that'll be the kit, the selection though here. Diablo diving in after a Nubrak. We see the root follow up with the Frost Blast here. Uh, here comes the cage, Diablo in the cocoon, the silence going out really just on a Nubrak. They're trying to get this Nubrak kill, but so much, they do finally get him. Kurama is gonna, never mind, not make it out, but the health bar is so low and the resurrection, they get back onto Krino with the root, but the, they're just so low. Vayne Compton's everybody on this team is nearly dead as Malfurion now dies as well. Beaver Hunter trying to save Hyperbole, but I don't think it's gonna work out here for the, uh, the Frost Mage. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that combustion from Krinovast was really big, and then they also got a hero back from the Ariel Res, of course, and uh, Fame Confidence didn't have the health bars for it. Yeah, that was one of those fights where they were doing really well, and then Rez just says F you, and, uh, you know, now we've got a full health hero with all their mana and everything, and probably their cooldowns because they were dead for a few seconds. Which is why Rez needs to be nerfed again. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's probably definitely happening tomorrow, right? Probably, yeah. So all these replays that are out there are going to be a pain in the neck to do. There's the Punisher jumping over the wall. Anubrak going in with it. Frost Blast going out onto Janna. She ice blocks it. We see the Tether Purification Salvo coming out along with the Twilight Dream here. Kreen of Ass using the Combustion. It doesn't get full duration, though. We, and with that CC, two dead here. Oriole in the group. Has an... Never mind. And she's going to be dead for a while, but so is Diablo. I made that mistake tonight, too. Just the instinct of press R. Uh, you don't always want to press it right away. Yeah, probably not the greatest idea to do it when your entire team is gone and you're underneath the keep. Yeah, I used it for a great uh, feed for Mark Zombie. Well, there you go. So ultimately, the fight, I mean, that that didn't go super great for Fane Competence, but the fight ended up in a three for one for in their favor. So considering the Punisher was there as well, you know, jumping over the wall, punching on their buildings, punching on their face, it could have been a lot worse. Yeah, Leoric was able to get a big entomb on a couple of the really low members and just take them down before Arya was able to drop all her hope on them. Malfurion has left the game. We'll see if we get a uh, pause out of the team here. Does look like it does look like it's actually a bot. So there it is. <laughs> Was waiting. All right, we'll come back to that in a moment. I'll move my bottle of Coke out of the way since it's right in the middle of the camera. Uh, I can't even pull up the talents. <laughs> I can, oh, here we go. I can pull up the scores. So, 
Taking a look here on stack, so repeated offense, not yet done. A little bit later on this one. We're sitting at uh, four out of six stacks there. We've got three on pin down for my Ev. So I believe it's one more for that. Yeah, one more, and then she uh, gets the full value out of that. What else do we have over here? Level 13s are online, or 16s rather, are online for both teams, but they haven't been selected yet. And I think that's, yeah, that's that's all the stacking stuff. Rip Furion says Munkus. I know, right? Uh, let's see. Munkus not super happy with the frost blast usage in the uh, in the game here. But yeah, it. I was just gonna say it has been a little bit awkward in the timing and placement, like the frost blast landing at the same time that his frost nova uh, is landing, kind of negates the point of casting the frost blast. But yeah. go ahead, you were gonna say something. I was just gonna make another dumb joke. Oh no! By all means. How, how if only Malfurion actually had regrowth instead of rejuvenation that they just call regrowth. I guess it's not a joke. It's a rant. I'm still salty. My restoration druid heart. Yeah. Yeah. Totally killed the chat. Way to go. Appreciate what it. What did I kill? The chat. Uh, I'm sorry, chat. I love you. Is it better now? Uh, maybe. Maybe. All right, what else do we have to talk about here? Uh, How'd your raid go today? Uh, you know what? It was okay. It's It was okay. We were done in about two hours. We had a couple wipes. It wasn't too bad. Just, you know, had to shake off the holidays. All right, so it sounds like maybe they're ready to go. I think we're Looks ready. like it. Oh, here we go. Three. And, you know, it's kind of funny, switching over to the game scene again and having it say, Welcome back, mortal, kind of makes it feel like it was talking to us. I know, didn't it, though? <laughs> yeah. Zakina Cheval says, Dead chat will stay dead. And there you go. Oh, a long-range grip onto Blaze, but the new habits allowing him to just unstoppable right on out of it. Big pressure up here in the top here. Now there's a frost blast going out onto Phoenix, looking for the the pull here. Doesn't get that chain out though. The uh, warden's cage used, and we're gonna see Leoric trying to wraith walk out of there, but ends up getting taken out. Can they get the kill onto Phoenix? Not quite. Barely makes it out. 45 health there. Now Furion using Twilight Dream. I don't know for what purpose. I think that might have been just a misclick because there wasn't anybody nearby. So it ends up being two kills to none. <laughs> Captain Wedge says you need more uh, cats in your portrait. And they're uh, taking a 3v5, which is a little ill-advised. And Chef Steve might very well pay for it. They almost yep. got the uh, Phoenix, but, you know, warp is a thing, and they'd already used all their stuff, so. But hey, Leorg's back. So anyways, uh, cats in your self-portrait. Yeah, those are my cats. Uh, portrait uh, is from that green fish. Great guy. Great artwork. It's got my kitties in it. Since I only own two cats, I can only have two in there, so, you know. There you go. Just need to up my cat lady game. Speaking of uh, cat lady... I saw Secret Life of Pets 2, which has uh, an interesting cat lady in it. I haven't seen the first one. Oh. oh, the Auric. The Auric, no. The Frost Blast missing the, because of the warp here. Apoc coming out, getting a few stuns here, but it's going to be Leoric falling first. Jonah looks like they're going to be the next to fall as Krino hitting every single point on the Warden's Cage. Malfurion there. The yeah. Chaos. And these uh, these fights are just not quite going how Feigned Competence wants them to go. And it's very difficult when you've got 
the jet propulsion blaze coming at you. You know, a new brat can dive into and out of places. He's they both have unstoppables. Um, and then, you know, Sailor Twift can just uh kick you out of the way. Yeah, um Faint Confidence had a little bit of an awkward engage there that didn't set up the fight on the best foot for them. So that's going to give uh, 19 advantage here. Coming up on 20 soon. They'll get some XP out of these towers here. They'll get a wave of minions to kill as well. So I don't think they'll be 20 uh, before this is down unless they get some kills. But they're about oh, to get that. that Big Frost Blast, but they can't get the kills. Like, I don't know. I feel like... I feel like you should have just taken Shadow Fisher because this is looking very much at this point like it's going to be game is level 20 coming up here <laughs> for Phoenix Rising. What is that level 20? Yeah, okay. MVP John Cena jumping on to three, getting a triple stun. Two of those people dying. Oriel using fly to jump over the core, trying to get oh, onto right? <laughs> the Maev. And that's going to be a domination. Five kills for Phoenix Rising Onyx as they succeed at the 2-0 domination over Okay, but Flight is the best talent in the game, we can all agree, right? Literal angel in flight. I mean, I always thought it was a fun one. It's, it's maybe the most satisfying talent to <laughs> use. Well, let's uh, let's hop over to the NGS lobby, see if we can get uh, one of the teams in here. Not one of the teams, one of the people from the winning team. See if we get uh, somebody in here from Phoenix Rising. Inbound says Goku. Show showing off these talents here, eight to twenty-one. Again, we did see the fly. Also, of course, the rewind there for Newbrack. Winter moot for Jaina. Hey, oh. welcome. Oh, there's Whoa. multiple people here. Yeah, it's a... Uh, yeah, the party. It's yeah. a party! We're refusing everyone else's uh, entry, though. <laughs> Fair enough. That's cool. So, uh, congratulations on your victory, 2-0. Thank you. Uh, and I gotta say, like... So, first of all, let me say thank you both to you guys and to Feigned Competence for, you know... Uh, waiting a few minutes, letting me get the stream set up and allowing us to get this uh, game, this match cast. Um, I know we got started a bit, little bit late, but on the same token, you guys like ripped through draft one in record time. <laughs> like there was no thought. So, I mean, so if we had started on time, would that have gone as quickly? Did you guys have that 100% planned out before you even started oh. that? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so game one. No. No, we, we just. Uh, what, what did we play again? What, what was that? Aerox and Aureole. Yeah. Right. Lunara, Chromie, uh, Blaze. So our support's been kind of yelling at us because he wanted to play <laughs> Aureole for a long time. Uh, he got his wish. Uh, as you can see, that signature Blaze came out again. We don't know any other solo lane. The mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, we hit. Not planned at all. Everything is kind of in, in came, comes up on the spot. Fair enough. Then, yeah. Well, and that game went uh, very quickly. Eight minutes and fourteen seconds, I think, was the the final time. So you guys really were, uh, you know, very much in control of that game. Um, picking up the boss right at level ten. They were just a little bit behind you on getting to level ten, but ultimately getting the uh, web weavers right behind it, getting some kills as they were. You know, busy elsewhere on the map. Um, put you into that position. When did you know that you could win that game? 
Uh, so pretty sure it was when Sailor was yelling, "We can end." <laughs> but when was but that? Was like we, but it was. Um, like, oh, we're on uh, top was... keep. I uh, know. No, it's before we get to top keep, and then we kill the uh, tracer, and he's like, "We can end." Yeah, and, he said uh, it just before that. He said when we turn in spiders. Oh right, 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 right. Yeah. He said because he said we can end with both of these. Yeah, and then. We may have had that idea while we were still doing the boss, actually. Yeah, I mean, we, we'd like to end Tomb very quick. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're not a fan when that game runs on. Yeah, I can imagine. Tomb of the Spider Queen is one of those that, like, it can it can swing pretty wildly if you if you get to, to late game and have, you know, powerful web weavers and a boss. Like, it, it, you guys showcased it there at 8 minutes, but if you get to, <laughs> to 15, 20 minutes, a boss web weaver turn in is, like, it's just game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very likely. Just yeah, I mean it's almost impossible to to not finish it there. Um, so yeah, I, I do want to point out. So you know, you mentioned about your your support player wanting to play Oriole. Uh, four minutes and seventeen seconds, I think it was, on getting the detainment strike quest level four completed. And oh my god. Yeah, those detainments <laughs> like like legit. Carried game one. No, yeah. no doubt. Like nobody should ever let you guys get Oriole, even if they nerf the hell out of Res. I was, I just was because of that. One hundred percent expecting the Oriole ban second game. I was yeah. shocked when it didn't show up. Cause yeah, I had some good Garrosh follow ups on them and like the Blaze Scooters follow up, but it was all off the Oriole stuns that we got all of our picks pretty much. So I was shocked when they let that through again. That Garrosh was so weird. What, it caught us off, that's for sure. But. <laughs> We, as you can see, our one-two kept, uh, it remained the same. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, and then you guys get into game number two. Um, you know, they picked some of the same heroes with the Malfurion and Leoric, uh, and you guys switched it up a little bit going with the Anubrak and Phoenix, and then rounding out with Jaina. So, um, Phoenix went into the, um, is it, mo yeah, mobile offense. So, I think probably the, maybe the least common pick but I, I like i don't think he has any bad picks in that but it's the least common um so like just as an example that's that's one slight variation what other variations do you guys like to throw out or or what have you with this kind of draft on a map like uh infernal shrines what, what did you do uh, a little bit differently there so normally i'm gonna be honest this is the first time we've actually drafted phoenix consciously <laughs> no. I think this is also the first time we drafted a Nubarak. Yes, this is also the first time we've drafted a Nubarak in, uh, at all. Even in, like, yeah, even yeah. in practicing, like, yeah. I don't think I've ever played a Nubarak before. Uh, so yeah, we, we drafted those guys, that was cool. Anuba, <laughs> it worked out. Uh, I don't know, like, the Phoenix, it worked out. Don't, don't mind the fact that he missed, like, six alts, but... <laughs> <laughs> don't mind that guy, right? Yeah, um, but I gotta say, like, Phoenix made it out with, like, sub-50 oh, yeah. hit points an unbelievable number of times. Like, it, it had to be so frustrating to be feigned confidence to know that, you know, you were, in some cases, not all cases, but in some cases, you were winning those fights. When, uh... And then you just lose. Yeah, if there right? was an award, if, if, that, if custom games gave out awards, like, you know, ranked games do then he probably would have gotten escape artist oh 100 percent he would have yeah no he doubt doesn't provide it. yeah kerma doesn't provide any damage so he wouldn't have gotten anything like scrap or anything. <laughs> right right you don't need to do damage you just soak up the 2k damage yeah. that it takes to get you to zero health and then you leave yeah and then one oriole you know heal heals you up to full so the real strats right right so um yeah there wasn't i mean there's not a whole lot to really talk about too much. I mean, you guys played a really solid game. Uh, Lulu, do you have any questions? Yeah, so other than Blaze getting banned, what would it take for you to let Krinovast play literally any other hero? <laughs> uh, so, I guess... Okay, so... Blaze getting picked by the other team. Yes, there you go. Blaze <laughs> gets picked by the enemy team or banned by the enemy team because we're never going to ban him. I mean, why would we? Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe if the other yeah. team is playing him, you won't make kind of us yeah. play him. Got rule, it. Rule of thumb is dodge draft forfeit first game if they do that. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah so plan. if you want your free wins, there you go. Um, <laughs> nice. Good call. Any other yeah. questions, Lulu? No. 
That's All it. Right. Well, uh, then let me ask you here, just at the at the end here, uh, any particular moments that were kind of highlight moments, whether something you did, your team did, or uh, the opponents did? Uh, I mean, I personally enjo enjoyed just bullying the Tracer in game one as well, <laughs> to be honest. That was yeah. just a lot of fun, game one. That was fun. What about what about you, Brendino? Um, I personally really liked um in the second game we were doing that top push and we had the fight, we got a couple kills, and we were leaving. And then Oriel was slow, so Oriel gets chained. We're all just like, we gotta save Oriel, we gotta save Oriel. Just turn that around and wrecked him. I don't yeah. know, I don't know why about that play. I just really liked it. Fair enough. All right. Well, uh, good deal. Congratulations and uh, any shout outs. Yeah. Uh, shout out to my team. Shout out to Feigned Confidence. They, it was a fun match, fun series. Good stuff. Uh, Kurama sucks. And I, yeah, that's it for me. How about you, Brenda? <laughs> um, I love you, Sean. Oh. And wrong Sean. Oh. And that's, rude. <laughs> and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sean, for carrying the game. <laughs> All right. Fair enough, guys. Well, thanks for joining us here tonight, and uh, good luck with the rest of the season. I think that ties you up with uh, You Are Not Alone. Now, you guys have played more games than them, right? Like one uh, more? Maybe? We're... I have no idea. Either way, I'm expecting to get, to get absolutely stomped when we go up against them. Fair enough. Fair enough. So uh, let's just pull it up and take a look, quick look here while you're here. May as well, right? If only uh, we were on uh, Beast Coast, you know. <laughs> that other Phoenix team wouldn't stand a chance, whatever it was. Yeah, you know what? There was another Phoenix team that tried to take them down, and it didn't go so well for them either. So, you know. Um, if, yeah, we are at one more match on them. We have yeah. Five. yeah. Oh, okay. Then we're clearly boosted. So, yeah. So, But even still, you guys are tied up here for first uh with them at least for the moment and uh just obviously just need somebody to take them out so it could be you could be could be or we could get cursed but or we could get cursed by the yawners again now nah, we're gonna win we're gonna beat them fair enough oh kurama says i have the flu i expected to play bad so it's you know you, I that's mean, your excuse we also expected you to play bad as per usual <laughs> And uh, let's see, the only black cat says no shout out to Twitch chat. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, guys, well, thanks for uh, joining us. Have a great night. Yeah, you as well. Thank you for the cast. Yep. Ding. Hello. Hello. Hey. Welcome back. All right, so what is it? It's 11 o'clock. Um, how do you feel about a replay cast? Uh, real question is, how do you feel about a replay cast? This is your channel. I well, I mean, I feel like it's okay to do the replay cast. Uh, so it's really just if you're going to join me for that. So, you know. Well, I tell you what, everybody, what we're going to do is we're going to just take a couple minutes. I'm going to get everything set up. We're actually going to see a Div A matchup between uh, Main Tank Uther and Tickle Me Tassadar that took place here on Saturday. So uh, stick around for that. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. <laughs> 